First thing we're going to do is identify the x-intercepts. Ladies and gentlemen, there's one thing I want you guys to understand or get very, very used to. Any single time you guys see a trinomial or you looks like a binary, looks like something should be factored, we always want to make sure we just factor it. Doesn't even matter if it's a part of the problem or not. Let's factor this. This is going to be x minus uh, 2 times x minus 1, or sorry, x plus 1, all over x minus 3. Now, this is very important because they're asking us to find the asymptotes, right? If, let's just pretend I could use the division property and divide this out. If I divide this out, let's just pretend this was an x minus 3 as well. If I could divide that out, that's no longer an asymptote anymore. That's now a whole, right? So if you can divide out your terms, it creates a whole. It's still a discontinuity, but it's a whole, not an asymptote. So that's very, very important because when we're finding the asymptotes, if we have a whole, that's not an asymptote. However, we factor it out. Nothing else can be simplified. So all we need to do, just like we did for the domain, is set your denominator equal to 0. Because where your asymptotes are, those are the values that are not in your domain. So set it and solve x equals 3. Done. Vertical asymptote. Next one, horizontal asymptote. Is horizontal asymptote is again we need to look compare the degree and the numerator. I'm sorry, the degree in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, what you guys can see is the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator. So based on your horizontal asymptote test, which we did in the first quarter, Logan, do you remember what the what the horizontal asymptote is when the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator? Nope, you're going to want to make sure you have that because I quizzed you and it was on your test. And now it's going to be on this one again. There is none. Every single time. Doesn't matter what the degrees are. Every single time the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree in the denominator, you do not have a horizontal asymptote. But that does now allow us to have a slant asymptote. So since there's no horizontal asymptote, we're going to find a slant asymptote. And all you guys need to do to find the slant asymptote is just use long division. In this case, yes, we could do synthetic division, but I just want to go over long division again to make sure that we are on the same page. So how many times does x go into x squared? x times. x times x is x squared. x times negative 3x is a negative 3x. Subtract the rows. x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative x minus a negative 3x minus a double negative is positive. So that's really negative x minus negative 3x, which is 2x. x goes into 2x how many times? 2 times. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Bring down the negative 2. And it really doesn't matter from here. You're going to get 0, and you're going to get 4, which is your remainder. However, I will tell you, don't worry about 4. x doesn't divide into 4. So don't worry about your remainder, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter. Your slant asymptote is simply the quotient of the division. That's your slant asymptote. So don't worry if it has a remainder or not.